This is prize ribbon. Now, many of you might be sitting there wiping your tears right now or shaking your fists at the screen at me saying, Tim Holtz, we do not need another blue. But you do, I do, we do. And that is because when I'm launching these colors, I really am not anticipating on launching these colors by a season, by a theme, by a whatever. It just happens, right? So some people kind of predict because maybe you're following the rainbow, right? Roy G. Bibb, and you're like, well, he hasn't done this, he hasn't done that. And so I think if you, if you look at the new distress color in this mindset, where you're like, well, wait a minute, we just had Savage Patina and that was kind of a greenish blue and we had Speckled Egg, that was blue. We've already had this. It's, it's really not about these 12 colors filling a rainbow. It's really about looking at the palette of Distress and saying what is a very heavily used part of the palette and where do we have the void? So just so you know, that's what I think when I'm adding to the palette is I look at it and I say, okay, what colors are people using a lot? Where are their significant voids? Because let's face it, it could be any color, right? I saw guesses for yellows and purples and grays and reds. It could be any of those. You're absolutely right. But really when you see the color, I just hope that as you look at these new color launches, you don't view them in a state of depression, right? That your choice wasn't there, but instead really open to the creative possibilities of a color. Because when you see the color, and you see how it works in the palette, that to me is what's going to open so much more inspiration for you as a maker, all right? So that's just kind of where I understand when it comes to, and I see, you're absolutely right. I see so, my gosh, the chat is flying. Thanks, you guys. Um, but yes, it's just gonna be a color that when you see how it works, it's, it's why it needs to, to go into the palette. So prize ribbon. Well, why did I do prize ribbon? What's this? Well, it's really about this, this blue. And what is unique about Prize Ribbon is going to be its, its kind of its tone qualities or its values, I should say. Like this is a color that can go very deep, very rich, almost into uh, a very deep navy, but it will also wick out into a very vibrant blue hue, right? Something we haven't seen. And of course I have color comparisons, uh, I've got swatches. And when you see, of course, how it works on different substrates, well, there again, this is a color that when I'm formulating this with the chemist, it's not just about picking a true color. So that's why the comments that say, oh, I want, I want a true blue, right? Or a true red. It's, that's never going to happen in the world of distress because I don't, I don't like true colors in the palette. I want the palette to have variations. I want the palette, the, any of the colors that we have to be able to do unique things depending on their mediums and depending on the surface that they are applied to. So just kind of keep that in mind that when we develop this, especially in the case of prize ribbon, this was about developing this intense color, but also not adding so much darkness to it that it doesn't have the potential to wick out in different colors, all right? So prize ribbon, of course, with any of the releases, we have the Distress Ink Pad, regulation size, the Distress Reinker. More and more people are really uh, finally embracing the value of a reinker because what's great about a reinker, of course, not only can it reink your ink pad, but this is phenomenal for watercolor, for doing any type of mixed media backgrounds because this is a concentrated colorant. So like one little drop goes a long, long way. Of course, we have the oxide pad and the oxide reinker. We also have the glaze. We have the distress paint. We have the spray stain, which is a sprayable version of the ink pad, right? Same kind of properties but this has the reactive property of the colorant versus taking a reinker and diluting it in water. Uh, and then we also have the oxide spray. Same thing, a wonderful uh, dye pigment fusion spray that has great opacity, but also the ability, wait, do you see this one? Yeah, and I thought in Natifu does a lot of uh, oxide sprays. Wait, do you see what this does, uh, not only on paper, but on craft paper? Mind blowing, all right? And then we have, of course, the pin, which brings me to the next part and also very exciting in the launch are these. Now, for those of you that are pin collectors like me, great. For those of you that just don't get this, I understand. You do you, really. If you just find these as just like a joke, no problem. But but don't be a hater, right? The people that just like to collect these pins, they're fun, right? It's just like when I go to Disney, I love pins and people go, why would you want a pin? Because it makes me happy and that should be enough for you if it's enough for me. So here's the cool thing about the pins. These sets, this is set nine and 10, now complete the entire palette of Distress up until now, the 66 colors 
in pins. So these are the final two sets. Now, if you're not familiar with these pins, they're just a, an enameled pin. Yes, they have a pin back on them. Uh, they're just really cool. Uh, I'll show you my pin board. I just like it visually for my studio because to me, it's just art. But I do want to point this out that, and I mentioned this in previous colors, these pins are, I don't want to say collector items because that just implies like that they would have value to the world, but they are one and done. Meaning the batches that came in on every release, Ranger's not making anymore. They're not bringing any more in. So once they're sold out, they're never coming back. So if you're getting into the collection, you definitely want to look to see, I believe all the sets are currently in, but now is the time to collect it versus if you're one of those like, hey, I'm late to the party and I wanna start, you know, then I believe that uh, these are gonna be harder and harder to find. And that's why with each new color, we introduce that new color pin, right? So let's just talk about the pins real quick and we'll get into uh, the color itself. I'm gonna take this off. I do have a little putty on the back. That's a little, little tip for anyone doing videos, right? If you're ever doing product videos and you wanna, you know, set up the, the stage. This is just a little, you know, like poster putty. It's great to put behind bottles so nothing spins on you when you're talking. Well, unless you knock it like I do, right? So I just take that off. There you go, right? Smoke and mirrors, that little bit of putty right there. All right, fun little prop. Wait until you see the flat lay. The flat lay is top secret right now till the live is over. Um, that flat lay was really uh, almost three months in the making. It was two months of collecting, but man, I love it. Okay. So the pins, if you are a pin collector, this is my pin board now, and I, and I appreciate Mario kind of covering it up because he's right, right? If you were, if you were counting, oop, you would have known <laughs> that there's a, there's a new one if you, if you have your board set up this way. So the cool thing about pins, right? It, maybe you just want a couple, maybe you want some of your, of your favorite colors. Now the colors themselves, the original colors are not sold individually, the only, thing that is sold individually are the new colors. So like Kitsch Flamingo and Speckled Egg and Crackling Campfire, uh, Rustic Wilderness and Salvage Patina. And then of course, Prize Ribbon. All the other ones, they were all sold in these groups of six. So sets one through 10, which of course would bring us the 60 colors. So this is how the pin board uh, stands right now. You can see here, I've got space for six new ones. And yes, anytime there's a new color, I have to uh, adjust the pin board, but that's, that's the fun of it, right? So. I don't really mind that. It's a kind of exciting because it's not like it happens every every day or every week, but when it does, it's kind of a nice thing to go back to the board. Now, this was Mario's idea. I thought it was really brilliant. This is a this is a letter board, right? This is a letter board I picked up on Amazon. And what's cooler that the pins themselves, let me just kind of pull this out, right? It just goes into that little slot. Now you can use a cork board. I know a lot of people have different type of pin boards, but I really never thought of a letter board. Here's what I like about it, right? Um, the whole OCD side of me, I love the fact that when I put the pins in a row, they're much easier to keep <laughs> to keep straight, to keep level. So I really like that. Uh, Marie asks, will the new colors be available in packs of six? No, the new colors are sold individually. And these are the final sets. So there won't be any other sets of pins. This is it. There's only 10 sets and all of the new colors are individual. And they are sold individual as well. I know a lot of people that do bundles. Uh, many, many companies like they offer you know, when you do the product bundle, you get a free pin, but here's the kind of the fun, cool part of the pins. You can see that they're kind of a quirky, fun, playful distress, it has all the color names. So that's, that's why I really like to use it as a swatch board. Are they true to color? No, not really, because I still have my, you know, my actual ink swatches that I have in the studio when I'm really trying to match it up. But visually, I use it more than I really thought I would. At first, I thought it was just more of a decorative thing, but sometimes I'll look and it's like, oh wow, yeah, I haven't used, you know, squeezed lemonade in a while or mustard seed, right? There was a comment that said, I hope you have a mustard yellow. I'm like, okay, we do, or a lemon yellow, right it, there. So the, the great thing about this is it can also be as a reminder in your creative space, it looks cool, it's great art, but also the colors that uh, maybe you have or maybe the colors that you want. So anyway, that's the pin board. I'm very excited. Again, a shout out to Ranger for doing this. When we first started the whole uh, new color launch, I wanted to do something fun and quirky. I'm a huge uh, pin fan for Disney. And so to, to be able to have this is really great, especially the fact that I know it's one and done for them. So it is still a lot of work to do packaging and art for only one time, but I appreciate that they uh, stuck with that as well because that's the, that's the other fun part of a pin is collecting, knowing that they won't be around forever. And a year from now, when we're still talking about distress, these pins will 
well, they won't be readily available. So those that have them, hopefully have them. At least that's my hopes. So those are the pins. Let's get into the color. Let's talk about prize ribbon, okay? So prize ribbon, like where does it, where does it fit in? Where does it, where does it play into the palette? Because labels are always, always difficult. We do our best. We do try to, to match Pantones when it comes to labels, but it's really the, the medium that itself that comes to life, right? That's the whole thing. So these colors, I'm just going to talk about prize ribbon and really where it fits in. It fits in definitely in the blue family. And when you look at the blues, this is where it is quite unique. And I have a swatch for ink and I have a swatch for oxide. Okay. So the colors and where I see prize ribbon fitting is right in between faded jeans and chip sapphire, right? Because faded jeans, it's a, it's an iconic blue in the distress line, but it is faded. It was designed to be, um, kind of more on the Wedgwood blue side, a little on the grayish side, definitely a faded look. And then when you wet it, it fades out even more. Chip Sapphire is a blue that contains a lot of black. So you can see this would almost be considered a deep dark navy because there is so much black. But when it wicks, you also see some of that black coming out of it, right? Which is great. That's what it was designed to do. It's designed to maintain its color integrity. So when this wicks, you'll see a lot of those gray undertones. This is very cool for like, you know, stormy skies or, or great dark shadows. Blueprint sketch, well, that was just a very unique, quirky blue. Blueprint sketch definitely has, I mean, sometimes I see it as blue and sometimes I see it, I, I don't know, almost periwinkle-ish because it it's not really purple, but it just, it has an interesting color, like a blueprint, right? That weird kind of blue. And you'll see that when it wicks out, you do kind of get these, well, kind of periwinkle tones to it of how it wicks. And that's where prize ribbon came in. And this is where we had, we went back and forth, back and forth on this color, because what I wanted this color to achieve is I wanted the deep intensity of blue, but I didn't want it to look black. No matter how much you put on it, I just want it to be deeper, deeper, kind of almost a navy color, but not a, not a dark navy. But then when you wicked it, I wanted it to go into a very majestic blue, but also into a beautiful ocean blue. And so when you look at the transition of prize ribbon compared to these three colors, you can see that these new colors we add, and I've talked about this in Rustic Wilderness. I talked about this in Crackling Campfire. When we add that, uh, when we're adding colors to the line, because it's such a complete palette, I mean, 60 colors, it was a complete palette. It's like, okay, let's add these colors that do different things do something different. So that means let's play around with this wicking property. And that's where I'm not a chemist, but that is the biggest challenge is like, okay, you want it to do, you want it to look one way, but you want it to react a different way, which is not what we normally do in distress. You can see that. You can see that this wicks like this, this wicks like this, this is this, but this one, whoa, it, it's got a lot of different value in there. And that is what I love about prize ribbon. So you'll see like when you compare it from the other colors, right? It has some similarities, right? You can see the brighter one, the faded one, the deeper one. And then that is where prize ribbon comes in, in the distress. So see, seeing it, I'm telling you, that's what it is. Seeing it. Now we get into oxide. Now oxide, same thing. It's going to oxide. If you're not familiar with oxide, it is a fusion of dye and pigment. So we're getting that colorant, that dye and pigment. It is going to wick very similar to its core color chip sapphire it's going to wick and you're going to see that black start to come through blueprint sketch it's going to wick and you're going to see kind of some of that periwinkle prize ribbon see what i mean that deep true navy color not blackened blue but a navy color and then look how it wicks what see almost electric like that that to me is what is so unique about it and and that is what is also important about kind of doing a live launch because if you don't know that, you're just going to look maybe online, you're going to see a picture and you'll be like, huh, blue. Yep. Have them. Okay. Yeah, sure. You might have blues, but this is why I'm adding these particular colors to the palette. Did we need a blue? Not really. Right. We have blues, but do we need this blue? Yeah, we do. So do we need it? No. Do we need it? Yes. And you get the idea. If you get it, you get it. That's what it is. And so the beauty of an oxide is we are going to get the opacity of that pigment, but that undertones of the dye, because it is that fusion, the fact that it can wick out something different, that to me is what is unique about prize ribbon. 
and I love it. And there again, you know, when you compare it to to the other colors, yeah, visually you'll you'll understand that. You're like, okay, this is my faded one. This is my I would say blacker blue. This is going to be more of that uh, navy. I don't want to say a true blue because it isn't. It it still has. You can tell it still has some mixtures in there to get it to do this shift. And then of course we have blueprint sketch. Now it's interesting because whenever I launch a color, I always like to share where I feel that it fits in the distress palette. Okay. It, it never fails though when someone's like, Oh, but how does it compare to this? And that's totally fine to ask. I'm, I'm certainly not making fun of that, but if I don't show the color comparison, that simply means there is no comparison, meaning it's not even close. I would be like, well, how does prize ribbon compare to walnut stain? Well, it just doesn't. But I still wanted to do this because I figured someone would say, well, yeah, but Tim, but what about Salty Ocean? Because that's a blue and I, I'm sure it looks just like Salty Ocean. Except it doesn't. Sal Salty Ocean is really more in the, the Mermaid Lagoon realm. And as Distress has grown, even for those of you that download the color chart from Ranger's website, if you notice when we did Kitsch Flamingo, we actually reshuffled all the colors for the first time because as we're adding these new colors, you know, Salty Ocean used to fit right before Faded Jeans, right? It was kind of like I would, I would fit these in, I would call them all the blues. But now that I have more of these deeper blues, Salty Ocean to me kind of kicks back to Mermaid Lagoon because it does have more of an ocean vibe. Definitely, um, you, can, you can notice a lot more like turquoise in it, which I never used to see in Salty Ocean. To me, I was like, oh, that's just a bright blue. So it's funny how as we add new colors, you really see that the it makes the the existing colors very unique to the palette that's the fun of adding colors like i said it's none of these colors that you you absolutely need but they're sure fun to have and they're cool when we add them into the palette so those are the color comparisons for prize ribbon and where i see this fit but of course you're going to see from the makes that once you start adding this to stuff and once you start putting this color next to other things you get an entirely different shift and one thing I'm going to point out before I get into, and I'll show you more even on the swatches, the significance of ink and oxide across the entire palette is really important to recognize because although it is the same initial color value, because we're talking about, you know, a dye and pigment base, dyes are always going to be more intense and more saturated of a colorant than a pigment. Anytime you add pigment, especially in oxide, you add a little bit of white to that. That's what's going to give it the opacity. And that is what's going to shift that color. And so it's all also really cool, especially for those that are doing a lot more mixed media, a lot of backgrounds, to utilize both together. So if you've not tried to do a background where you're using the ink and the oxide of the same color, try it out. You'll see exactly what I mean. You're gonna get totally different values of that same color because you're, you're introducing more dye to that mixture, right? Really cool, okay. Thanks for all the, the kind words. People are asking where they can purchase. I know that you know there's there's stores all over. There's some online stores here, but there's also uh, check your local stores because the ink refills. Anyone that sells reinkers, they are available for for the ink pads. All right. So let's talk about these. We're going to go through the mediums. We're going to talk uh, ink pads first, then we'll get into sprays. We'll get into paints. We'll do all of them. Swatches, right? Swatches are life. Right. I know that there's many people out there uh, that follow it. <laughs> Thanks, Vicky Booten. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks, Deb. I agree. Like the, the whole thing about color, right? Swatches are life. And there's many people out there that do amazing swatches. I know <laughs> Keech is one of them uh, that, that I follow that I love to see how people do swatches. My advice to swatches, right? If you're, if you're just going to stamp most of the time, uh, like Jennifer McGuire has like a, a stamping chart about stamping a color. You need to do swatches in the way you as the maker utilize the color the most. So if you say, well, Tim, a lot of times I do backgrounds and sometimes I blend and sometimes I stamp, then I believe you should create a swatch or a series of swatches that show that because that is different. How you apply the ink to the substrate is completely different to the overall effect. Also the type of paper. And I go through this each time. The paper that I work on most of the time when it comes to working with uh, Distress in a background is either Distress watercolor cardstock, right? That's gonna give me uh, a textured side and a smooth side, both of these, but it reacts with water very cool. I love how that works. Another new one that I do if I'm doing a lot of blending or stamping is white heavy stock. This is 130 pounds, so this is thicker than watercolor, but it's completely smooth. 
and so it allows for a very creamy blend but also really nice stamping or of course sometimes and you'll see some of the the swatches i'll do on craft heavy stock same 130 pound but it is important that you don't do swatches on the cheap stuff right so let's say you do let's say you use mixed media all the time maybe you use heavy stock or, or this is the same uh, stock that the distressed tags are made out of right so maybe you're a tag person then you should do the color on this and you're going to see my swatches i always like to do them on something white and i always like to do them on mixed media because this has a little bit of of a cream value compared to white cardstock you see that and it, that's going to impact the color so it's really important to do that yeah for those that have seen the blends you've seen it with like you know with kitsch and salvaged no different when it comes to prize ribbon so here we go this one is done with the ink pad this is just smushing your ink pad spraying dipping drying dipping drying dipping drying and what that does is you can see those values you'll see that as we start building up color we're getting that really deep navy color then as it's wicking out we're getting a very cool majestic blue and what i love about prize ribbon is that it does not wick out to a red pink or black value it stays blue and i love it i really really do from a blending perspective look at that we also have the ability to get that dark color value in blending whether you're using blending foam or whether you're using a brush really really cool and then we have this fade right so you can go from it being super intense into the fade and just these swatches alone and this again this is on watercolor it just might just be like, oh my gosh i love it but wait <laughs> but wait there's more wait until you see this color on mixed media and honestly this surprised me it again there's there's our papers watercolor mixed media it's a little creamy but look at what it did what this was super interesting to me and the reason is is because although this was cream i honestly expected to see some type of i'm not going to say green right i didn't expect it to be like lime green but i expected some sort of green value because blue and a little bit of yellow would make green it didn't do that at all in fact it actually became more navy and the water spots became really intense outline and even the wicking even that lighter tone still didn't wick out green so those are the kind of things that really excite me when i start to use these mediums is like what like that is that's the cool thing but you can also see that both of these papers they react the same ink differently right watercolor paper is designed to create a watery look it trails more right it wicks more it creates these little uh ripply bipply things like the whole thing that like see it around there like little jaggedy bits whereas mixed media it also flows but it doesn't flow the same as watercolor it actually has a little bit of a smoother flow but where it has those ink spots they're super intense super outlined and that's from flicking water on there or just dipping and drying dipping and drying now blending again i was shocked <laughs> i was just surprised so blending on mixed media again created that darker value um i would say that i i prefer in this scenario i prefer this because this one i did notice a, a little bit of a shift right where i like this darker value but again you do you you do the likes but i will say that when you're playing around even if you have little scraps that you've cut off from a tag or a card make those as swatches you don't have to devote a, a, an entire sheet of cardstock to a swatch you can have like just little snippets of that just to remind you of what that medium looks like on the different papers you use as a maker it has to be what you use right, right. now everyone is using <laughs> Is that, is that what I said? Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh boy. I apologize for my made up words, but you know what I mean? I like, I try to explain the, the movement. All right. So this one is an oxide <laughs> and oxide in prize ribbon is amazing. Completely different look than what we achieved with the dye. Now, both of these are watercolor, right? But you can see that the oxide, we're still getting that intense deep blue but it's also wicking out to that beautiful, majestic, um, brighter, vibrant blue. Not like Salty Ocean though, right? And it's not deep and dark like Chip Sapphire. Pretty amazing. But the blend, and I know so many people love to blend with an oxide. Look at that. That is creamy goodness. It's so beautiful because again, an oxide is always going to blend smoother than an ink simply because this is dye. And even though you get a nice transitional blend, you're, it's always going to be a bit pixelated if you will 
because you're talking about dyes hitting the, the fibers of a paper. Oxide, because it's a fusion of dye and pigment, you, you do achieve a much creamier, smooth blend. It doesn't make one right or wrong. And could you blend both on the same? Absolutely, right? Really, really cool. Then we'll get into an oxide on mixed media. Look at that, right? Love seeing that look. Love seeing how that layers and how dark that is. And again, the blend. Now, I didn't notice much of a difference when it came to an oxide, and I'm not surprised by that because again, an oxide is a dye and a pigment. So it really runs fairly consistent across different papers because of that pigment, right? The pigment's always gonna sit on the surface. So it is different. It's just not as different as just the true dye. So very interesting, right? I love, this is kind of one of my favorite parts of it is just seeing how the different colors and different mediums work. Then we're going to get into sprays. You may want to hold your breath for this one because the sprays, I got to tell you, they are pretty phenomenal because it is a sprayable colorant. So you're able to get a lot more colorant on the surface, right? Than you would from an ink pad, even, even from layering and dipping a color in. So I'll go back to watercolor paper. This is from the ink pad. This is the spray stain. Now, if you haven't played around with sprays, you really want to give them a try. I'm telling you, they're great for backgrounds. They're also great for watercolor stamping. You can take a spray stain, spray it out on a craft mat or something nonstick, tap your stamp into that wet ink and stamp with it. It's going to give you a, a beautiful watercolor look. You're going to see some of the makes done using it. But how ridiculously beautiful is that? Look at the difference in intensity. So the spray stain is a sprayable version of the ink pad, but because it is that true dye, the intensity, you're able to lay down more color in one single blast from the sprayer. But there again, I was like to show, it's still going to wick out into those same beautiful tones you would get with an ink pad, because it is the same base. It's just more concentrated uh, in that spray form because you're putting so much fluid dye on that substrate. It'd be very similar like if you went direct to paper with your ink pad, that's the color you would achieve if you went direct to paper. But now that we have sprays, I rarely go direct to paper with my ink pad just because I don't wanna use all the ink from the ink pad, right? Look at that, isn't that beautiful? And just like what happened with uh, this layering on mixed media, look what it did. That's again, mixed media with the spray. Total, same spray stain, but look at the difference there. It just got just darker, right? More intense. You can again see how, I'm not even gonna say that, that word again, Mark. No, but, but they you, love the words because they say the words are truly perfect for what you're doing at the right time but like so but that's what it does you know like watercolor paper creates ripples like your ink spots are just they're kind of jaggedy where on mixed media they just appear more open they also appear a little bit more intense to me right a little bit more illuminated simply because well watercolor paper wants to absorb color and mixed media is designed to play right take and give take and give that's that's the whole idea with this all right so oxide spray now an oxide spray when you use an oxide spray by itself, you have to keep in mind that it is going to oxidize significantly, but absolutely remarkable. And you might go, well, this kind of looks like faded jeans. Not at all. Like faded jeans is so much more muted in an oxide, but this is what I love about prize ribbon as an oxide spray. Because it's still that fusion of dye and pigment, I'm getting that intense saturation of color on mixed media. I, I did a lot of water there and I kind of wanted to see how it would trail out. Here you can see on watercolor paper, I tried to do the same thing. I got a little bit of movement, but not the same as I did on mixed media. Again, there's no right or wrong. It just depends on what you're going for and what look you want. But take a look at that oxide. Man, it's just like, it's like a galaxy. And that's one color. That's one color in water. Prize ribbon oxide spray, sprayed on paper, spritzed with water, dried, flicked with water, done. Beautiful, right? I love it. Such a good color. And it, again, I, I hope you really appreciate the, the swatch time. Some people, this might just be boring because you're just here for the makes, but I think seeing how the medium plays out and how it works is really, really essential. Distress paint. So um, I'll talk real quick about distress paint. I know Rangers in the house and they're probably like cringing because I'm about to say what they don't want me to say, but I'm going to say it anyway, because as a maker, I think you just need to know this. So um, in the world of Ranger and even in the world of distress, there is, as I mentioned, an ever-growing palette right? 66 colors makes 70 if you add the white and the metallics. Uh, at the beginning of this year, Ranger decided to discontinue about 30 colors 
of distress paint, right? I think it brought the palette down to maybe 30 of the original colors. And of course, all the new colors like speckled egg and crackling, th those are all part of, they're still part of the paint line. So they didn't, they didn't retire any of the new colors. But a lot of the older colors, they have decided to permanently retire from the line. So that whole, you know, bring it back, please bring it back, please. Bring, it's like, it's, it's gone. Um, you know, I, I wish that I had more control over that, but I don't, I don't control the universe. Like, um, like I'd, I'd like to, <laughs> I just, I don't, especially the creative universe. I don't have a say, you know, when, when it just doesn't sell and, and they need room on their shelves to, to make new things. I can't argue with that. You know, I want to add new colors. So, you know, they, they need to do what they can do, but as a maker, I just, I want to share that with you. And, and it's not that they didn't want me to say anything. It's just sometimes that creates a bit of a panic or a frenzy in the industry. That's unnecessary. And sometimes people get just, you know, a bit, I don't know, aggressive about uh, colors going away, but it is what it is. So if you are a Distress Paint fan um, and you like it, my advice, I'm going to ask them uh, next week if I can publish the, the list of colors that have been retired. So you guys will know if there's some of your favorites you might want to stock up and hopefully they'll allow me to, to post that information. But it's important to know, right? But that being said, the colors that remain in the paint line are still a very full palette. Okay, a very full palette that when you're working with that, you will have enough paints to choose from. But there's other designers, you know, Dina is definitely more in the paint world than I am. So, you know, her palette can expand this. I focus more on the inks and really there's only one warehouse. So it is what it is. Things can't last forever. Right. Um, so here is prize ribbon in paint just painted out. I love this color. And you can see like here, it's, it's reflecting a lot of light from the ring light in front of me, but that's really the truer color. You can see it's a beautiful, rich blue, but distress paint, of course, is water reactive. So what's cool about this paint is it's still going to deliver those wonderful values that we see in the ink, right? That deep tone and that light wicking, but this, this is permanent. Distress paint is the only medium in the line that is permanent and waterproof when dry. So to achieve this look, this is distress paint, put on my media mat, sprayed it with water, moved it around with my finger because I don't want, you know, four dots hitting the paper first, just kind of move it around. And then just like you would ink, you're going to dip, dry, dip, dry, dip, dry. But as it layers, the paints do not react the previous layer. So if I were to spray water over this background, this is completely permanent completely waterproof because that is the, the benefit of distress paint. Distress paint is great because you can paint with it, right? You can paint on fabric and metal and, and wood and plastic, all of those things. It can, it can go outdoors if you want it to, but from a mixed media aspect, you can create these beautiful backgrounds and then add things over it and not worrying about this rewetting. You can do another layer of paint over it. You can do oxide, you can do whatever you want, but this background layer is permanent because it is distressed paint. But in order to get this movement, you have to work with it when it's wet, because when it's dry, it's waterproof. Now paint on mixed media, I always like to share that because it doesn't change at all. See, it's that same, because paint is purely pigment, so there's no dye, so there's no color variance. But when you wet it, right, because we're gonna have some of that paper show through, I like that it looked a little darker because obviously if you think of paper as a light box or a light source, the brighter the paper, when your medium thins out, the brighter the light is shining back here, right? So that's what makes this look really uh, ocean-like, right? So bright because we have white behind it. When you change the tone of your background, right? Whether that is mixed media or something else, we're just getting a different level. We're still getting all that wicking. It just doesn't appear as bright simply because of the paper, right? Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, you guys are like going off the rails about the paint. See, that's probably why they didn't want me to say anything, but it is what it is. Don't worry about it. Let's, we will get there. All right. All right. So next up, we're going to talk about glaze. Now glaze is very interesting. If you're not familiar with embossing glaze, there's some videos on there. I even did some demos. Understanding glaze, uh, you can really see the potential. And Sharon did a great make that, that definitely talks about this feature that I'm going to mention right now. Distress embossing glaze is an embossing powder, but it is translucent. That means we can see through it after it melts. Okay. Traditionally, most embossing powders are opaque. 
you put them on a substrate and I'm not, I just say traditionally. So it doesn't mean that every other powder is opaque. There are still other transparent or translucent powders in the industry, but embossing glaze, they are all translucent, every color in the line. Now there's not a huge palette of this. Hopefully we can expand this palette uh, in the next year or so, but this is what I love about embossing glaze. We've got that wonderful shine. Now you can just apply your uh, traditional embossing ink, right? I use distress embossing ink, but you can use Versamark or whatever as your clear ink. Apply the powder, heat emboss it, and you get this beautiful translucent colorant, right? But if you layer this over something, meaning if my ink layer wasn't clear ink, maybe it was distress ink or distress oxide, whatever color you use as your base for this is going to shine through and impact this color. And I'll, I'll make sure I keep these swatches for when I show you the make because you just won't believe the difference. Now, same thing, when we switch cardstock, that glaze changes. Why is that? Because it is translucent. So even the subtle shift of paper impacts the color of glaze. That's what's so fun. So if you have some colors of glaze and you've only ever used clear embossing ink with it, sit down today, this weekend, whatever, and just take that, that glaze and go, okay, I'm gonna stamp an image in pink and use this color glaze. I'm gonna stamp that image in red and use the same color glaze and see how that shifts because you can create so many unique colors by combining a distress ink or oxide with a glaze because these are both embossable inks, right? When you stamp this, you can put embossing powder over it and it will hold the powder until you heat set it. Same thing with oxide. Now, it doesn't have the same open time as a clear embossing ink because a clear embossing ink, if you've ever felt it, it's very oily, very glycerin. But both of these contain a level of glycerin that will stay wet long enough for you to apply the, the embossing powder, regular embossing powder or glaze, and then heat emboss it. Obviously, if you use regular embossing powder, you're not getting the benefit because it would, it would just cover the color. But a glaze, we are playing on the fact that this translucent color will be impacted by whatever color is underneath it. But very cool, and I just, I love, the shine of that. Bossing glaze, so good. So, so good. <laughs> I mean, you start creating nail colors. That's funny. All right. So now let's talk about this. Let's talk about both of these colors. Now we've already talked about these inks being uh, used on watercolor paper, right? Or mixed media. And we, we see what these colors do. But because this is a dye, a very intense dye as you've seen, I wanted to see what it would look like on craft paper and it did not disappoint, right? Look at that beautiful, rich color. Completely changed because again, we're going from something translucent, but this is the same ink from watercolor paper to craft and I love it. So that's the other thing to think about when people go, oh, you know, could you, could you do a, a navy color or do this? Here's another fun fact. If you have any type of stamping tool, right? stamping apparatus in any way where you have the ability to stamp and stamp in that exact same area again, you can layer your distress inks. Meaning if you like the look of this color and you see what it looks like over brown, then you could, for example, take an image, ink it up with a brown, maybe frayed burlap, right? Or brushed corduroy or walnut stain, stamp the image onto white paper, lift it up, wipe it off, ink it with blue, stamp in the same area, and now when you layer blue on brown, you're going to get this color. So when you're stamping and you have a stamping tool, you have the ability to still layer your dyes, right? It won't work with oxide because oxide is going to cover up the previous layer, but your dye inks, you have the ability to mix and match your colors. So if you have a color in distress and you're like, oh, I wish this, I wish squeeze lemonade was just a little, a little more yellow. Okay, great. Maybe you're gonna stamp the first layer in a light layer of mustard seed, and then you're gonna add squeeze, le squeeze lemonade on top of that, right? And you're gonna get that new value. So that's something to keep in mind when you're playing around. The, the ability to mix and match distress is truly endless. But look at this one. This one, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I actually, like, it, it kind of took my breath away of what Prize Ribbon did on craft. This is the oxide. Now we know that oxide is going to oxidize, but truth be told, when you're oxidizing on white paper, you see the oxidation, but you don't really appreciate it as much because, well, it's, it's white on white and you kind of see that and you're like, okay, that's great. But when you get that glow on a dark substrate like Kraft, wow, that became just pure magic. 
And yes, I could, I could just go to town and combine this with salvage patina on craft and really get a whole patina, or maybe I put it in with a little bit of metallic paint. I could go on and on for these, but I've just learned as I do the new color launches, it's like, focus on the color holds. Focus on the color. So there will be cool combos. I'm sure uh, many makers will be sharing as they play with this color. But I wanted you to, to also remember as we go through all these colors, play around with some different substrates, especially craft. If you haven't worked on a craft paper, um, I do recommend you don't have to buy the distressed heavy stock, although it is, in my opinion, the best because it's 130 pound craft. Traditionally, craft paper, because it is recycled paper, is very porous and very thin. And I don't like how inks normally play on thinner ones, which is why I wanted to do a thicker version. But still, play around on a craft substrate and kind of see what you get, all right? So those are the overviews of the color. How do we do? I'm just kind of, yes, it does look like water. All right, very cool. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Okay, I'm just trying to catch up with the comments. We doing okay, Mario? Doing great. I know I created a little bit of a panic, but yeah, listen. Okay. It's, it is what it is. Like, see, see, that's the thing. It's like, I want to tell you, but then sometimes I'm like, say nothing ever again. But I think we need to know as makers, make your choice, but certainly don't, you know, don't, don't go off the rails with this. Okay. Let's talk about makes. Prize ribbon is amazing. So a shout out to the makers. There's actually going to be uh, several people sharing some stuff uh, today throughout social media. So I can't wait. I haven't seen that, but I, I do collaborate with with four top secret makers that get this color way in advance. So they have the ability to create makes for the live. So a shout out to Sharon and Paula and Stacy and Zoe Hillman, simply because they, they get that color. They have to be so top secret for so long, but they really have a distinct challenge when it comes to the color launch and their challenge is as follows. Sharon's challenge is to utilize the new color in very, clean, colorful, simple cards. That is what her challenge is for the color and she delivers every single time. And you'll see these from the makes. Paula's is about taking that color and incorporating into the world of ideology. How do we see this color used on different substrates and especially with a vintage vibe? Stacy is about creating shabby vintage, uh, creating makes everything from cards to dimensional, but giving it more of a, of a shabby vibe. And then Zoe, her assignment is to uh, stay on the dark side with me with brown and use that new color always with brown to see how we can achieve it. And you'll see from these makes, like every single one of them just knocked it out of the park. All right. So we'll take one at a time just because, well, we can. All right. So this is a card that Sharon created, right? This is just a panel. This is done with embossing. And most of these makers will have tutorials for a lot of their makes here. I'm not saying that all of them will have tutorials for everything, but be sure to follow them because they're going to be sharing a lot of their how-to secrets for utilizing the color. Um, they gave me little notes on a lot of different things. So what I love about this, she used spray stain on this one. So this image is embossed in white. That's what creates the resist. But you can see such a beautiful background with prize ribbon. And this is where you can appreciate that color intensity from the spray. And as I mentioned, how it wicks when you add water to it and just a very beautiful card utilizing that color in an intense way, right? Because that card has serious intense color as the background. Now, Stacy took a different approach, right? A lighter approach, shabby chic approach. So this card is done by stamping these. This is the new floral outlines from Stampers Anonymous. Isn't that just so stunning? So this kind of reminds me of like, I don't know, like a vintage uh, China pattern or a little toile. I love the look of seeing that intense color stamped. So do you see how prize ribbon almost looks black when you start watercoloring around it? So this is about stamping in that color and then just adding some watercolor accents. But you can see around here other little elements. So all these layered stamped elements you see here, so cool, right? The labels, that little tickets back there. I love all the numbers, little butterfly, just a beautiful shabby approach to that color. Two completely different looks of that same color, right? One is a spray stain for saturation and this one, whoa, unreal. Now all of these makes will be posted on my blog following. So you'll be able to uh, see all of these makes and also uh, they will be linked to the makers blogs or tutorials as they post them if they post them but be sure to follow them because a lot of the times they share uh, a lot of their stuff on instagram and not necessarily on the blog so it's important to follow them there as well so paula created this one for ideology this is an ideology framed panel you can see photo booth utilizing the tags 
the little curio frames, the vials, but this is about like, okay, her challenge, how to use this color in ideology. And you can see there's some elements here like the quote chip, creating that. These are the flowers, this is bouquet. So these are ideology paper flowers that are white that you can add any colorant to them and stain and make your own little vintage millinery flowers. So the bouquet, there's actually tons of these paper white flowers in the ideology line. And then if you look back here, same stamp that Stacy used, right? The outlines, but look at the totally different look because instead of stamping it in blue, Paula stamped that in a shade of green. And I love seeing the difference. That to me is always what is so inspiring about the makers, right? They don't get together and go, what are you making? What are you making? They all kind of do their thing. And so when I get makes where the maker use similar product, but in a different way, I'm just like, yes, this is like very cool. And honestly, I haven't even looked through these uh, until we just went live. So that's when I first noticed it. So there's always a lot of details that maybe I don't notice initially. And that's why it's also important to follow these makers because they're going to share tips and tricks that I didn't even pick up on. But I love just the ability of layering and that fact that you can add those colors and how well it pairs with the gold and the greens and all of the vintage. Now this card, Zoe created this card. Again, Zoe's challenge is use it on brown, but you might think, well, that's just easy. And it really isn't because taking a color and always having to pair it with a neutral, still, you know, the, the whole idea is to achieve all those different properties and qualities that I talked about each color having. And here she totally nailed it. You can see back here that dip, that dip, that deep rich navy right there. I love that. And you can even see there's that little bit of that oxide magic, see? And then of course the watercolor, I love, it's just beautiful. And then that background, that splatter, right? On craft, Zoe captured that magic as well. So it's really cool to see a make utilizing that, but still all the level of detail, right? All the stitching and sewing around every, man, I wish I could sew like that. I cannot. My sewing is just a little crazy. And I, I've yet to, I've yet to master the zigzag. I'm not good. My zigzag never looks good. My zigzag looks like, I do step on the gas, but yeah. And I've tried people are like, Oh, I can show you. It's like, yeah. And then I step on the gas again. Anyway. Yeah. Beautiful detail. So again, remember when you take a colorant or a medium, play around with spraying it and saturating it, doing a background and leave that open space. That open space is also going to help uh, kind of balance, especially when you're layering play around with when you watercolor, add color, dry. And then I love this. I love that whole watercolor stamping. And many times people, uh, especially people that are kind of OCD like me, we would forget the magic of just stamping in something fluid, whether that's stamping with a spray stain or whether that's inking your stamp and giving it a mist of water, because I think that lost in the inky darkness, this to me is magic just because it's not crisp and clean and embossed like you would normally do with with word stamp. So those are all the details that I kind of pick out when I see them like, God, that, like my eye just went right there. Plus it's kind of the only piece of paper that is left white. So it brings your eye right there with that edge. Beautiful. All right. So this one, even Sharon even left me notes because when I looked at this, I'm like, uh Oh, you know, like, uh, what is this? I don't know if she meant to send this, but this, you guys, this is prize ribbon, right? But this is glaze. Now let me, I told you I'd remember that swatch and do you think I did? The answer would be no. So let me grab it real quick. All right, so here's the thing to note about this particular color. So she just said uh, inked with distress ink then added embossing glaze, okay? So this is just, this is going to be prize ribbon ink underneath it. Let me find my swatch. There we go. Just so we can get the visual comparison. Do you see what I mean? What, right? Because glaze is a translucent embossing powder by you changing the color, the foundation color under the glaze, that is what's going to reflect or impact this color. So prize ribbon glaze with prize ribbon ink underneath created this absolutely gorgeous color of blue. And this is not dark blue. I mean, it's dark, but this is not like a black blue, like chip sapphire. You see what I mean? It is such just a, an amazing navy color. And I love the contrast of that. So this is embossed paper. She gives me the whole thing. I adhered them, painted the watercolor underneath. So this she die cut. That's one of the Sizzix dies. So you can see those little panels and then went in and watercolored the open areas. Isn't that freaking stunning? I love that. The color, right? That's the whole thing 
to remember to play around with your mediums by putting different colors together and combining that. So I do love that glazed background because sometimes people think that, you know, embossing glaze is only for sentiment stamps. You know, I'm going to stamp a, a word and do that. No, you can do embossing glaze as a background, right? Whether you wanted to glaze the whole thing or whether you wanted to sprinkle that in, but I love the effect that that gives. It's beautiful. Now, speaking of effect, Paula created this make and I was like, this is so cool. So I'll start back here just so you can kind of read uh, the entire thing, right? There is gold in every part of your story. Beautiful use of prize ribbon, very clever make. This is using uh, an et cetera tag from Stampers Anonymous, but I just kind of want to show some details first. So here you see prize ribbon in the background, amazing background. And then you see all of these wonderful gold embossed. Now, uh, Paula's here, so I think, uh, Paula, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you might be sharing this tutorial today, maybe. No pressure if you're not, but I kind of think you said that. Um, so I love what gold did to this color for my eye, right? So to me, I saw this as much more of like a majestic blue now. It really, it changed a whole property because of what it was paired with. Now these are the Ideology mini marquee letters. They're just a pack of all these little plastic letters that you could glue on, staple on, sew on. She said the tutorial is on my blog today. Yay, so this will be on uh, Paula's blog. If you don't follow Paula, you can go to the makers page on timholtz.com or Paula can uh, put up a link to her blog there. So what's unique, like I said, is many people glue this or, or sew this or whatever, but. Paula kind of created this letter board and what she did to create that, I'm going to show you the detail. This is my decal trimmer from Tonic. So if you're not familiar with the decal trimmer, the decal trimmer is like a guillotine paper cutter that cuts a deckled edge, right? It doesn't cut a zigzag sawtooth that I, I kind of joke every time. It's, it's not going to create that. It's going to create something very subtle, sometimes almost smooth, but then it's going to also give you that very unique deckled edge. And so she used the decal trimmer to cut these little pieces that she sewed on. So that to me, I love that detail, Paula. There you go. Now you can appreciate the subtlety of the decal trimmer, right? I also love how you backed this in gold as well. But that just, I don't know, it just added to the vintage vibe. So it wasn't like these straight, clean pieces of paper. But maybe that's you, right? Maybe you like just those clean cuts. You do you. But I really... Uh, the benefit of the decal trimmer, and this is totally using it to its advantage, is that because it's a guillotine, you can actually cut strips of decal paper, right? You're not trying to tear everything with a ruler and you're getting that clean, straight edge. That's right. Very happy. I'm happy that the decal trimmer is actually back in stock. It sold out when it first came out. So um, beautiful. Very cool. I mean, right. These makes are just like, what? Oh. All right, Stacy created this. I love this shabby vintage tag. There's so many different things going on in the background. Like again, you can see uh, the benefit of doing backgrounds with paint or utilizing the color for like a watercolor effect or doing even some tinting. Even though we don't have the crayons yet, you can still tint with your inks and even uh, the distressed paint if it's watered down. But I love how it's paired with just those little vintage shabby scraps. Very, very sweet, very unique layering and that's what i would always say about stacy she's you know you've got that little touch of vintage but then boop, there's there you go there's some shabby flowers right there and always that that pop of white that's in there she always likes to surprise with floral and little vintage elements isn't that detail just precious really is no other way to say it i don't normally use the word precious guys but this one i love it i love the detail and i again when I was mentioning all the different kind of pairings of that color, and you're gonna keep seeing, like even Sharon did some very bright, clean uh, cards. It doesn't always have to be 100% new color, right? 100% prize ribbon, but when you're pairing it with different colors, a little salvage patina in there, just it's very cool to see how this color works with what is already there. Now, this make, this make, well, this make actually makes more sense now when, um, so in chapter three, there was a make that Kathy did of cactus that I was just kind of wooing over. And Zoe, Zoe had already sent the makes for the new color, but I don't see them until last night. But she's like, oh, you know, you love that. Just wait till you see the new color make. And I'm like, I don't really, I didn't even connect the dots. And then I see this. This is, I love it. It's absolutely amazing because it's a totally different look and feel and definitely on the grungy side of how Zoe incorporated prize ribbon into wood grain and paired it with cactus and rusty gears. 
Like literally I have gooseies. Look at that. See that? Serious gooseies from this because it's just, it's, it's everything. I love seeing the, the wood grain, the hammered metal. I mean, look at that detail of cutting those strips and then going in with old school ideology texture hammer. Love that. And this is an ideology adornment, that little ribbon. Very clever. I wanted to use, I almost used that in the flat lay and I didn't. It's so cute. But there you go. You'll see the Sizzix, uh funky cactus back there and that grit paste gear. But totally different look, right? So the whole thing about a color is really understanding how a color can also play in with the theme. So, so far we've seen that prize ribbon being, you know, very beautiful, very sophisticated, paired with gold, shabby chic look any of that now we can kind of see okay it can also really tie into pretty much any theme we want to do from uh very southwest so i consider this like a southwest very grungy there's arizona right there and then we have these makes from sharon and stacy right a total nautical vibe so sharon created this card very simple very clean right that's it simple distress oxide stamping doesn't get much better than that where you can just take a color and stamp that and it does make for a beautiful color for a nautical background right stacy created this vignette right did some stamping with prize ribbon did a little grungy still a little shabby right a little soft with some mummy cloth just a couple little uh, metal metal die cut pieces they, i love that finish that you achieved this isn't metal this is just this is cardstock but beautiful and i love that cracked mica and the little photo booth, right? Really charming. But how unique that both makers created something nautical and Southwest. So same color, just looking at these three makes, totally different theme. Always remember that about your colors, always. And, and I think really, if you surround yourself with some type of color, and this is not just to sell you on the pin board, this is whether you have swatches or whatever, if they're in front of you and you can see them, when you're creating these types of makes, it's so much easier to say, oh gosh, let me try this color. Yeah, I've not thought of like, you know, putting putting prize ribbon in here because faded jeans would have definitely been uh, much more faded and chip sapphire would have been a, a very black blue. So I really love uh, seeing that oxidation. Of course, I can't imagine how amazing this looks with, with salvage patina. But you can see that even whether it's mixed, whether it's clean or whether it's got a little shabby appeal, we're able to change the whole look and feel of the color and then we'll go to this card Sharon also created this so this is using distress crackle paste through that new uh, stencil that I did I think it's called metropolis it's like a city map but then using the embossing glaze right that technique of just kind of painting with powder but I love the whole French Parisian theme of using prize ribbon right because it is it's such a great color blue when it was paired with red and cream it totally changes the look of it Right, so here I see uh, more patina. Here I definitely see that that ocean nautical vibe. In this, I see this totally different. I definitely see this more of of a deeper, darker navy tone in the background. But then that pop of blue on that classic label. I love how many uh, people have been using that label stamp from Stampers Anonymous. There's a whole set of all these labels, so you just get to stamp the color. And just seeing that different theme throughout this, like that's what it's all about. And I'll bring this one back in just to just to kind of show you from Paula. Like that to me, when you look at a color, that's everything right there. That you're like, okay, depending on my style, I can still incorporate prize ribbon into that. Just really, really beautiful. All right, let's keep going. There's still more inspiration. I'm telling you, they, they just, they knocked it out of the park with inspiration. <laughs> it's unbelievable. All right. So Sharon, again, her challenge is to do clean and simple. And you've seen a lot of, of different cards that she's done. And I like how she can take a color, and I, I already said this to her, that she can just throw a whole different theme at it, right? Just be like, here you go. I'm gonna do a background of leaf. I'm gonna do nautical. So here you can see right there, that little touch, that little touch of prize ribbon. Didn't have to be everything about it, but look how prize ribbon really works with uh, this more playful palette of distress. It fits right in there. And I love just seeing that background, those stars really, Really cute, that little sparkly star. And this, of course, is the new uh, Varsity from chapter three. Look at that. Those, I mean, to me, those letters kind of look like patent leather, right? They look like stitched leather because of uh, that glaze on there. Just, it's so cool. Love it, it's a great card. This background, again, stamping, right? T 
taking that prize ribbon, mixing it with different colors. And it is interesting when it's paired with different colors, prize ribbon takes on a whole different approach. And that's the idea about these new colors is these new colors that I add to the palette. I want them to play with the existing palette in a unique way, make them change, make them different. So I do love that. This is the new uh, Impresslet, the butterfly. Love that it just stayed very clean. See possibility everywhere. That's an ideology uh, metallic sticker, but really great just to utilize the color as a background and keep everything uh, very plain, very simple to really appreciate the, the look and stamping of color. And then she just goes into to this extreme of utilizing colors and creating bold backgrounds, right? When you incorporate this, ink, oxide, watercolor paper, die cut, mica spray, splatter, right? That's what, if you look on here, you'll see like black splatter and some little, little shimmer on there from the mica spray, but beautiful to utilize your ink pads as backgrounds as well. And you can see that even from a tropical vibe, which again, I wouldn't say prize ribbon has a tropical look. It certainly does, especially when you, you put it into all of these different colors. It's almost like a, yeah, like avatar blue too. Huh. I love it. So cool to see uh, three totally different ideas with the color. And that to me is, I, I wish for, as a maker, I could kind of think like that, but I, I tend to do a lot of, you know, very similar grungy look and feel stuff. But that's what I, I, I appreciate the, the creativity of every maker. I think every maker has something to, to totally contribute. So this one, Paula created this and I was like that Paula always takes a chance and she's done this every color um, where she'll take the color and she's just gonna do some blend with it. She's gonna run with uh, how she creates different backgrounds. So this book, I love this. That's a, a backdrop inside. I love how she created this book. I love the texture on there, little resist spray on the outside, but I love how prize ribbon is mixed with different colors. I mean, look at that. See when I was talking about patinas and greens, Let's just for a moment, take that in, shall we? <sighs> I love that, I do. And I love, look at all that, yeah? Look at all that trouble -y bubbly Because some people think it's trouble. Me, ah, I love the bubble. That's the best part, that texture. And you could spray it, you could totally get a nice clean look, but that's the beauty of resist spray too, if you just spray it on and like, let it do its thing. But then inside, again, detail 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 where uh, she used so many different mediums and she did leave me a, a bunch of notes but i don't want to kind of spoil the fun because i'm sure she'll share all the the tips and tricks of what she used and how she used it but i love that she did the paper there again there's the decal trimmer so see all these pages they're all cut with that decal trimmer i was just i was so pleased that she used that because i love seeing it like in the wild right i i know we have the trimmer and some people just use it on the bottom but i love seeing it used like just in a make, in an organic way. But you can see utilizing the inks paired with different colors and stamped with that, using the ideology clippings and some ideology ephemera. There's photo booth, there's a linen tape. So this is where Paula really uh, has that challenge of taking that color. She could use stamps and stencils and all that, but still mixing it in with all of the different ideology elements. And just, just these little touches, right? A little bit of cheesecloth on there. I love the label tape. Again, another photo booth. I love this. His heart full of bright hopes. Just so beautiful. These are the clipping stickers that they are clipped from books. Love the little detail of the pin and this pin. Well, it just holds on that little charm, right? And that pin is just pinned onto the stitching right there. Details, details. There you go. Love just all those little tabs on there. Again, more photo booth, more linen. So you can take that same kind of concept and just implement it into a book. I know there's a lot of people that love to do junk journaling and you, you kind of don't really uh, grasp how many things you can put in there. Well, you can do a lot of your own backgrounds just by doing stamps and inks and then start adding your different layers. But certainly, I mean, you'll see, I, I, can't, I can't stop touching the edges, uh, the deckled edges. Very cool, again, taking ephemera. There's that little ideology tiny clip. Isn't that cute? Little functional clip there. Label tape, little photo booth all the confidence in the world. Here's another little stitched, look at that. Little ideology adornment key, just hanging from that thread. I mean, really, come on. See, I just can't do that from detail. I wish, it's all those little elements, little tiny attacher. It's just those things about, you know, not everything has to be glued down also, just kind of leaving it uh, hanging off here and there. There's just so many details to capture uh, in a book. And I love that. And I love how uh, each maker really takes that color 
and just create something definitely unique to their creative style. That is what it's all about, right? Look at that. It's her dad. I love that in memory of absolutely charming P. Super charming. Yep. With a gentle nature in memory of. Isn't that beautiful? Love it. So beautiful, beautiful book. Wonderful make. And that's the thing. As we go through, you'll see that, you know, the color and the style of that maker is really about staying true to what they do. Again, two more cards from Sharon. Beautiful color palette with prize ribbon, right? And how it's just mixed in with, with salvage patina. And I just, I love all the colors that are paired because that is something that, yeah, my favorite color is brown. So I love throwing that in there. But when you see these different styles, again, utilizing these elements, just using paints, Paints have that wonderful matte quality. I like the fact that you can play around with brush stroke as well and give it just a very cool earthy vibe. There you go. Painted papers with distress paint. See, it's a good guess. This one, watercolored. Love seeing that color. And again, that stamp. It is definitely a favorite of the most recent launch. The outline floral, just because it just allows you, it kind of begs you to color outside the lines because it just creates a nice effect. And I love that, that ideology little label sticker right there beautiful cards and to me they had very similar color palettes and i liked how they had a totally distinct different style right love it very cool yeah prize ribbon you said it like a mood ring it is prize ribbon uh, most of the colors and and i think even the makers will say to that uh, zoe tells me a lot as well like they're chameleon colors right you you get it you you first see it and you're like okay well that's what it is it's blue but then as you start using it you're like wait a minute like this looks like this, this looks like this. That is really my approach to, to all the new colors that I've added to the Distress line and what I continue to add. It's going to be something that maybe you don't think you need, but when you see it and how it plays with the others, you know, at the end of the day, those 12 colors, I can tell you right now, it is not that Roy G. Biv uh, spectrum. It isn't. It's where I think a color needs to be within the palette to help support what is already there, right? So you take this card, Zoe created this card, but look at how that blue really pops against that much darker brown now. So you can see that that darkness kind of stamped in this background, those inky papers. And by mixing those colors, it can create like these gray values. I love this grungy brown, almost looks like leather. You can see that inked lens, that little bit of fabric, because remember the mediums you can use on so many different materials, everything from paper to fabrics. And then that little field notes, right? A little paint in there you see that just that little spot of color right you can still use paint in there until we have crayons see how that light just catches that color love that pop of prize ribbon same thing on this metal embellishment and then of course on that die cut insect for entomology but just this card alone like look at the different the different values of prize ribbon depending on what medium what substrate how it's applied and what it's paired next to that's why I just said like the makers just, they just, just knock it out of the park. They, it's like they're in my head. They, they just explore every possibility of a new color that I hope to achieve. I'm so grateful for them that they, that they do this. And really they do this in such short time. I think prize ribbon, maybe for all these makes they had, I'm not sure if it was nine or 10 making days, um, to get them done, to ship it back. So like, uh, for this particular, because we, you know, we have to ship it, they have to get it to us. We have to have to have time to ship it back. And yeah, it, they have a very short window for this color. Most of the time we like to give them a little bit more, but this one, well done, you guys. So Stacy created this. Again, it's that whole shabby vintage, right? You, sometimes shabby vintage is just on white, so it's very uh, clean and, and beautiful. Sometimes there's that shabby vintage on grunge, and I love seeing uh, this ideology mini clipboard, this background. Look at that with that little sprinkling of some metallic embossing powder the blue paired with brown, but also this, that whole shabbiness about adding uh, that colorized blossom on there, those flowers, again, a lot of the cream, a lot of the blue, and then just the details of the photo booth, the little buttons. I just, I love that. Really, really cool. The little bit of mica that's layered on there, little charm down there. So that's, again, when you're looking at a new color, how is that color going to play in with the kind of style that you like to do, right? really important to embrace that and go, okay, I really love, like maybe you love vintage photo, or maybe you love, you know, peeled paint or crushed olive or whatever color, see how that new color plays with your favorites, because that is, that's always the magic of expanding the palette. 
right? And just look at all those layers. Oh my gosh. So many layers stacked up, dimensional. See, it's always in the detail. Not a little upside down. I love the little heart adornment ideology. But see that little bit of oxide when it's over brown? That's another thing that is really great about these different mediums. When you're creating a background, you don't always have to stick with the same medium, right? Maybe you're gonna start out with some spray stain, you're gonna do your background, and then you're like, huh, I wanna add a little pop. Okay, you're, maybe you're gonna flick some oxide on there, or you're gonna do a brush stroke of paint. Definitely explore all the different mediums that you have available to you, even like the paint where you're adding it to the metals to tie it together. That is the importance of it. And that's quite honestly why we release it in so many different mediums. Because you know to just have an ink pad, that would be great. But if you like to do a lot of mixed media work, I didn't want everyone to always be waiting for their favorite medium in that color. And that's why I just think the, the pressure that Ranger has to, to create all the colors and nail them uh, in the different mediums for launch is just, it's spectacular. So appreciative. All right, this vignette tray that Paula created, I mean, look at the, the different effects that we can get simply by utilizing this on wood. So we've got prize ribbon on there. Love the back and how that really alters that vignette tray with some stamping. And then the details inside, right? So look at that frame with that texture paste through a stencil and then all the different layers, right? The ideology backdrops, the, the baseboards, the tags, the clippings, just the little details of the key or the hardware. This is all ideology, right? The hardware heads, you've got the clipping stickers down here. Right, I love that little touch of flair. Really great just to see how this became a backdrop, but if you look at it in its entirety, where we've got those little touches of prize ribbon that tie all the other colors together, it really creates a, a wonderful supporting role of that. And same thing with all the layers, the little details of just, you know, how she, you know, glues the string just in that perfect wispiness and you know, and, and just the little details of of the snippets and the ephemera. Absolutely spectacular just right i mean come on can you even and it for our final mate i i honestly didn't think she was going to do this and i'm i'm happy that she did because as mario was bringing in the makes um i'm like oh man zoe didn't do the hat like i i always look forward to the hat and i think the challenge every time is even even more challenging but there we are there is the hat the hat that zoe created uh with that prize and uh, i actually messaged her when i unpacked this last night and i'm like oh boy when people see this die this was an old school mover and shaper an old sizzix die that i did that has long been retired and the fact that uh it's just ideal for this launch i love seeing there is there we go there is a decorative trim in action with that wood grain i love seeing that color there's a little keys but see just the detail and that again true maker style right Zoe did her. She like, if you're a, a fan of Zoe's work, like I am just seeing the hat and the layer of that. It's very, very cool. I love all the details, right? Even from the mummy cloth. See, that's why as a maker, you kind of look at the stash. You're like, okay, that was from Halloween. Okay. That was from circa who knows when, maybe 10 years ago, right? Or the little adornments or, Hey, I have this little scrap of wood grain. I love the texture of that uh, on that trim from the new Sizzix die and the backdrops. But that to me is what is always exciting about the makes and just seeing the different styles. Zoe yes. Said you have to bring that back as a Finley. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, look at all this. I mean, just just the style, the the variety of the makes. Just my gosh, unbelievable, right? It's like I don't even know where to put everything because I'm just trying to give you little one little taste. Because as we go through, right, each one is just like. Oh, 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 look at this. I'm doing pretty good. It's like I'm creating a, a whole nother flat lay here in, in real time. Ooh, flat look at me. Look at that. All right. Look at that little overview of, of the makes. I got to squeeze one more little bright one because I know that that's just what she does, right? She's got just that beautiful ability to add uh, that pop of color. And that one, like, I still can't get over that. Amazing. Anyway, an overview, a beautiful look of of prize ribbon right and and honestly the the creative opportunities and potential this color has i'm very excited to have this now as part of the distress family I'm telling you prize ribbon it's a winner <laughs>